presentation will be by uh, the Dr. Angel Milan uh, from Spain, uh, the Zaragoza, the multifunctional nano platform for drug delivery. Okay. Good afternoon. Thank you for being here. And thanks to the organizers for giving me the opportunity to show our, our work. You can see from the long list of authors that this has been a work with a lot of participants from many countries. I can mention the University of Peiro, the University of Pavia, the University of Verona, University of Toulouse, the Center of uh, Cancer Research of Salamanca, and uh, many, uh, the Biomagune in San Sebastian, and many departments inside the University of Zaragoza, including the uh, Universitary Hospital. Uh, we believe that uh, in comparison with molecular systems, nanoparticles offer a big advantage, is that they can join, they can ensemble many functionalities. So we try to make profit of that, and we have been developing, sorry, <laughs> we have been uh, developing uh, systems, strategies, to make uh, what we call a multifunctional nano platform. We, uh, our strategy is based on the use of uh, po um, atom transfer polymer, uh, radical polymerization. Uh, this uh, um, uh, method for polymerization allows a very fine control of the size of the polymers and allows also uh, to ensemble several blocks of different uh, monomers. So, there are two ways to functionalize this uh, copolymer. One of them is to use the uh, functionality as an initiator of the reaction. Uh, we do it that, for instance, we can place here fluorescein, and then the polymer will be fluorescent. Uh, then we build a linear uh, block of uh, the polymer with a linear block of uh, which is uh, hydrophobic, and then we polymerize with uh, hydrophilic poly uh, monomers that are uh, functionalized with different functionalities by means of uh, a linker, which is uh, polyethylene glycol. So in this way, we can uh, build this copolymer, which is hydrophobic and hydrophilic, so amphiphilic. And to uh, add functionalities in the shape of uh, inorganic nanoparticles or hydrophobic drugs or even um, some uh, molecules like this one, which is, as you will see later, a thermometer, we can uh, just uh, make, uh, join all this uh, in the solution. And then uh, this polymer that is in uh, sub, at some pH, hydrophilic, when we increase the pH, becomes hydrophobic and encapsulates all these functionalities. So we can have the functionalities in the polymer or we can encapsulate the uh, functionalities in the nucleus of the nanoparticle. In this way, we have been adding some uh, imaging tags like uh, fluorescence, I, as I mentioned. We have, uh, of course, encapsulated iron oxide nanoparticles, so we can have also MRI imaging, and we can have uh, magnetic heating, as you will see. Uh, we can uh, also add some uh, radioisotopes in the iron oxide nanoparticles, so we can also perform uh, radio imaging with a spec. Okay, you, I will show you some results. Here are the nanoparticles inside the cells. You can detect them because they have fluorescein. When you mark the, some organelle inside the cell, then you can't see where the nanoparticles go. In this case, they go, all of them go to the lysosomes. Um, this is the result of MRI imaging. This is the brain of a, of a mouse. You can see before injection, after injection of the nanoparticles, and the difference um, of them. Images. This is the, these are results uh, obtained by SPEC after labeling with indium 111. And you can follow very well the biodistribution of the nanoparticles. By the way, you can see here that uh, contrary to most of experiments of uh, uh, biodistribution of iron oxide nanoparticles, in which uh, you see a high accumulation in the liver and 
uh, in the spleen. Here, you don't see accumulation in the liver of the spleen. Here. Uh, but you see um, that the nanoparticles go to the kidneys and they are excreted after some time by urine. Okay. Um, one of the drugs, let's say, that we are uh, adding to this uh, nano platform is uh, this, uh, well, is cis platinum. Uh, I think I've been going too fast. No, okay. Well, uh, the first uh, drug that we have just uh, used is an antibody that has been used uh, in more than 30,000 patients for the treatment of cancer for some years. It has been developed in Cuba, in the Center of uh, Immunology of Cuba. And, uh, well, you can see here that we are perfectly able to uh, attach the nano, to conjugate the nanoparticles with the antibody. You can see it, uh, the effect in the cytometry. Uh, this is uh, it's not occurring when the uh, cells are with the control cells. Uh, I must say also that the antibody goes against the epithelial growth factor receptor. So in these cells, for instance, the ratio of uh, receptors in per cell is about 10 to the, to the 6, and in these cells it's 10 to the 3, and we can selectively um, internalize the nanoparticles inside the cells that uh, express, overexpress the receptor. Here are our confocal results of the same uh, nanoparticles. In a few uh, minutes, you get the whole internalization of the nanoparticles in the cells that express the, the epithelial growth factor. You get non-internalization in the control cells. And you can see that the internalization is occurring via the uh, receptor, because when you block the receptor, sorry, you, you don't get uh, much internalization. Another uh, drug that we have uh, conjugated to these nanoparticles is cisplatinum. Instead of uh, using normal cisplatinum, uh, we use this cisplatinum that has been, uh, that contains some uh, bile uh, acids. Why? Because it was demonstrated uh, with the uh, drug alone that this uh, cisplatinum is uh, causing the, uh, stopping the DNA uh, duplication but it's, uh, it doesn't, uh, it's not causing any toxicity, either in cells or in, in animals. So we uh, conjugate this uh, cisplatinum to our nanoparticles. You can see from cytometry that the nanoparticles are uh, internalized in the cells, uh, and uh, they don't produce any mortality. Okay, sorry, don't have much control of this. Okay, and what we are doing now is, uh, well, we have also done some uh, analysis of the proteins inside the cells to see uh, what is the effect of the cisplatinum, and we can see that, uh, what I said, that the, it is uh, uh, the proteins related to the DNA expression are going down, are decreased, uh, in the presence of the nanoparticles. So the, the, the drug is, is uh, working. This is uh, probably our, our best result. We, is, uh, the, we are functionalizing the nanoparticles also with a molecular thermometer. This, is, uh, was, uh, this work was done in cooperation with the University of Faveiro. They are very good experts in luminescence of, lantan of lantanides, and we were uh, giving the, the expertise in uh, production of nanoparticles. Uh, okay. Come on. <laughs> okay. As I said, it's a molecular thermometer. It's a complex a, a coordination compound of lanthanide with some organic ligand that is acting as an antenna to capture the photons of light. Then this light is uh, uh, gone to the, the energy goes to the lanthanide, and the lanthanide is emitting light. Um, we use actually two types of lanthanides to make a thermometer. 
the one of the lanthanides, for, uh, europium for instance, is uh, emitting always with a constant intensity. And you can see it here in this plot. But the other lanthanide is decreasing the intensity with the temperature. So the ratio of the two intensities is giving us straight the absolute temperature of the, of the molecular thermometer. So this uh, molecular thermometer is internalized in the cell and is giving the temperature of the local uh, iron oxide nanoparticles. So when you apply the magnetic field, an alternating magnetic field, you have the chance to measure the temperature, of course, of the medium, but you have the, the, the chance to measure the temperature in the uh, magnetic nucleus. And this is what we did in this uh, experiment. And uh, the main result here is that we were uh, detecting a, a, a gap between the temperature of the nanoparticle and the temperature of the medium, which in a short time could be about more than, than, than one degree. These nanoparticles are not especially heating, but we can have nanoparticles with much heat power. But the idea is, okay, if we can build some uh, temperature gap between the nanoparticle and the, and the medium, perhaps we can heat a part inside the cell to a temperature higher than the, the, the ambient uh, uh, temperature and to produce some harm inside in this local part of the cell so we can induce some apoptosis of the cell. That would mean that we wouldn't need such much uh, heat to kill a cell. We would need just a, a few local heating and not the massive heating as it is uh, intent now with the um, actual hyperthermia treatments. So this is uh, what we are trying now. And for that, we had uh, built a microscope that can uh, capture the emission of the two lanthanides. This emission of the two lanthanides at every pixel of the camera is transformed into a map of temperatures. And uh, at the same time, we are coupling to the microscope a small um, electromagnet so we can heat the nanoparticles after being internalized in cells. We have done already some measurements, uh, but still we don't have the, the results. So that's, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. And open for a discussion. Any questions? Yeah, please. Thanks for the nice presentation. I have, you know, the, the nanomedicine community is quite reticent to when you say that you have a nanoparticle and doesn't go to the liver. So you, you show some image, but I lost the, the, the timing scale that you have, the size of the nanoparticle, and if you have, so it's a three question in one, and if you have some techniques that uh, corroborate the results that you Can I have? That you the have. I, did, I didn't see the timing. Uh, well, if I, if I can have, a, the, the timing is uh, after 30, well, well, let's see. Oh, hey, here. It's quite short. Uh, in the first uh, 90 seconds, all the nanoparticles are in the blood. So you, you see uh, more intensity in the organs mm. with uh, high uh, blood mm. uh, contained. Mm -hmm. And then after 20 minutes, you already see the nanoparticles in the bladder. And um, well, after 3.5 uh, hours, still you have some nanoparticles there. Okay, what, but what I wanted to show you is slides that didn't show in the presentation. <coughs> This one. This is uh, the nanoparticle, or better to say, this polymer nanoparticle with the iron oxide nanoparticles mm -hmm. inside. Mm -hmm. This is, has a size of uh, about 20, 30 nanometers. The nanoparticles are uh, half a size of four, five nanometers. And this uh, nanoparticle was found in a proximal tubule cell. So 
it has crossed the, the glomerulus. Yeah, yeah. That's Thank you for the talk. I think that what you measured was uh, with your thermometer was the difference before and after induction with your magnet of the temperature. Is this correct? And and we know where, well, where my question is how much temperature uh, changes and for how long is needed to kill a cell? We don't know. That's what we are doing now. Uh, but, uh, well, we just built the, the equipment. The equipment uh, we know is working, but still we have to control temperatures, we have to control a lot of things, and we have to optimize the temperature measurements from the intensities. But, uh, well, uh, we'll see. Okay. A, a couple of short questions. First of all, uh, your uh, conjugate of cisplatin with uh, bile acids. I wonder if it uh, changes dramatically the lipophilicity, hydrophilicity of uh, the conjugate as compared to the free cisplatin. So I wonder if cisplatin is able to get to the nucleus as efficiently as a free molecule versus conjugate with uh, bile acids. Well, we just have indirect uh, results. Like, uh, as I said, uh, we uh, were analyzing the proteins in the, in the cell, and we found that the proteins related with DNA expression were uh, decreasing. Mm -hmm. But uh, we, we have not localized the, the bioleases or the nanoparticles. Mm -hmm. And the second short question, uh, the lanthanide-based uh, method for measurement of temperature, I would argue that uh, the signal would be very dependent on the immediate environment of the molecule. Where it's not. Where it is located. Uh, you know, you the, signal, the signal is, is uh, dependent on the intensity of the source and that's all. That's the signal of uh, a single complex. But the ratio of intensity of the two complexes is independent of that. So you can uh, you measure the same temperature at areas where the concentration of the complex is low and in areas where you find uh, a high intensity of light. And you can uh, switch the intensity of the source the excitation source, and you still measure the same temperature. That's the good thing, that is you are measuring a ratio of intensities. We have done many experiments, and it's quite uh, robust. Last question. Uh, last question before mine. Okay. Another short question. The bile acids um, can be uh, used as a vehicle to target to some cells. Actually, they are dendritic cells that they have a receptor called TGR5 that is a receptor for the secondary bile acids. Do you see that maybe even the distribution can be affected because you have this kind of uh, component? Yeah, probably. Actually, that was the, the idea of the people who developed these uh, cisplatinum complexes. They were looking for uh, targeting the, the liver and they found targeting of the liver. Um, final short comment is, uh, actually you, shown, you have shown the indium activity, not the nanoparticles. So let me remind you, the actually first presentation by Wolfgang Tarak, Parak should have been uh, the, like this. All the nanoparticles in vivo should be checked for their integrity. The uh, doped indium is not going to be detached in the serum or in the systemic circulation or after taken up by the macrophage or cell endothelial cells. So that issue would have been checked. Yeah, well, uh, okay. you know, uh, in the nanoparticles are prepared by precipitation with the base mm -hmm. and they are prepared uh, inside the polymer. So we, we, don't, we don't perform a normal liquid precipitation. We put the ions inside the uh, uh, polymer, and then we add the base. So the, the, the nanoparticles are precipitated inside. Um, in a basic uh, pH, iron uh, and indium, both of them form uh, oxides. So, so the indium is no, in no meaning uh, in an ionic way. It will be precipitated and it will be inside the polymer. Okay. Um, so. We are now checking whether, uh, which is the amount that you can, of indium that you can mm. add to uh, iron oxide crystal structure. Because we know that 
the you can have mixed oxides yeah. with uh, iron and, uh, and indium, and we expect that the indium, which is here in a ratio of uh, one to ten thousand. Mm -hmm. in comparison with, uh, with iron, okay. this is, will be inside, like as a doping ion, mm -hmm. inside the iron oxide. Yeah. But uh, uh, we believe that the proof is uh, the, 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 the pictures. I mean, yeah. if we, we have observed that the iron oxide yeah. gets inside the, the kidney. So, so, so my, my comment was, uh, even though it seems to be obvious according to the chemistry, but you need to, we need to have the experimental evidence, at least the serum stability, I mean the mixing serum, the indium, if indium is released or the, the platinum, uh, DCG is released from the particle or not. Yeah, we, so are why, doing, yeah so. you are, we are trying to get that evidence also using some uh, uh, dialysis uh, methods. No, not just the dialysis, just the incubation and then check the, uh, the they separate the particle and the supernatant, and if it is released to the plasma or serum. Ah, okay, that's uh, yeah. That's easy. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, the next presentation will be by.